Hey everyone, this is Big Face from Big Face Robotics, back with the Big Wheel Bot, or as I'm now calling it, the Gardening Robot, because the plan is to have this robot help me out in the garden and drive around, help monitor the plants, check soil moistures, that sort of thing. So that's the plan. I've uh, made a few hardware modifications since the last video, I'll cover them off really quick. You'll see a new caster mount on the back of the robot. The 3D printed one snapped again, that's probably about the third or fourth one that's broken of different designs, so I've gone through an aluminium box section type mount on there, so it should be a lot stronger and it's lasting really well. Uh, the only other change really in terms of the robot itself is I'm now running a 12 volt system, so I've got these two sealed lead acid batteries in parallel instead of series, so I was running 24 volts, now I'm down to 12 and the robot seems to perform reasonably well just on 12 volts so get a bit more run time and I'm not having to step the voltages down quite so far for the Raspberry Pi and Arduino and things in there so I think a better solution. So what I've been working on is some robot mapping uh, for this robot to be able to navigate its way around find the plants, the sort of flower beds uh, to do anything useful I think it's going to need some sort of map uh, I've done a bit of occupancy grid mapping in the past but not for a while, so I've been relearning a lot of that sort of stuff, and, uh, and I'm going to show you what I've been up to. So first thing I want to look at is the data that's coming back from the robot as it's uh, being driven around the garden. Uh, I've got video and I've got a data a text file. We'll have a quick look at that one first. So you can see these are the packets of data that are being collected approximately three times a second and they're a, a comma separated line uh, in the file and they're of the form um, encoder values, two encoder values, the your reading from the MPU6050, the front and rear sensor readings, the two readings from the infrared sensors at the front of the robot and the joint positions of the uh, robot arm. So in my Python script I read in a line from the file and then I can separate it uh, by looking for the commas and I can grab uh, each value as an integer and use that for later processing. So that's what the data file looks like that the robot's collecting. The other information coming back from the robot is the video from the webcam. I'll quickly show you this. I'm not using this for anything at the moment uh, for the occupancy grid map, but I'm hoping to in the future. The plan being I can you know, use some of the, the, the video footage and detect um, the grass areas where I don't want the robot to drive. I can uh, detect, as you can see on the screen, the, the soil areas and the plants within them and add these to the map as well. But for now I'm just concentrating solely on a sort of standard occupancy grid map from the uh, sonar and infrared sensors. To begin the mapping process I needed to plot the robot's path as it drove around so using the encoder values and the yaw read in from the MPU 6050 I was able to reconstruct the robot's path and that's what's showing on the screen at the moment so this was from a set of recordings of the garden driving around the path and, uh, and just working out the robot X and Y positions um, as it drives around and translating that to the map. So with the path plotted the next job was to model the sonar sensors and the infrared sensors so that each reading from the sensor could be assigned onto the occupancy grid map. Uh, so I've written a couple of functions here um, one for the sonars and one for the infrareds and you pass in some information, so you have to pass the occupancy grid map. It doesn't actually modify the map, it just uses that to get the shape of the return array um, so that everything matches up. You pass in the robot position and angle, the reading from the sensor itself. Thickness is used to determine how thick you want to plot the obstacle on the occupancy grid map and scale, make sure that all the readings are scaled to the, the correct uh, value of the original occupancy grid map. 
So the approach with this is to determine what cells are in the each sensor's field of vision for a, a given reading. And the way I'm doing this is to create a, an empty mask, an array, and drawing onto that array with an OpenCV function. In this case, uh, ellipse for the sonar sensor and, and just a line for the infrared sensor. And then plotting them as, as white pixels and then uh, finding the non-zero um, pixels within that mask and that tells me what cells of the occupancy grid map are within that sensor's field of view. Uh, for a sonar sensor that's typically a, a sort of cone shape or part of an ellipse which is why I'm using the ellipse function here and for an infrared sensor it's just a straight line. So once I know all of the pixels or cells that are within that sensor's field of view I cycle through each of them and assign a probability. Uh, the way I'm doing this for the sonar model and the way it's typically done is uh, is making the probability affected by the distance from the robot to the cell and also the angle from the center line of that reading uh, to where the cell is and, and that's normally modeled with a Gaussian. I'll bring that up on the screen because I think this will make more sense uh, to look at it. So here we go, here's the robot position down here, this is the cone shaped beam of the sonar sensor and you can see that nearer to the robot there's a more definite probability of free space and as that goes further away that, that probability drops off and also angle uh, from the midpoint to the edges of the cone. Uh, that's modelled by a Gaussian as I said and that's also true for the uh, detected obstacle. Um, I've also plotted this in matplotlib as a wireframe plot and that shows it a bit better I think and you can see how the distance and angle of the cell to the robot position um, affects the probability that's assigned. So the infrared sensor model is a little bit simpler in that it's just a line and if it's determined to be free space uh, it's just assigned a certain value and if it's determined to be an, an object in that cell it's assigned another value and if I show you that one it's very simple it just looks something like this so the lighter cells are free space the darker cell is the detected object. So with all of that in place I was then able to start producing an occupancy grid map as you can see on the screen this was one of the early attempts and it made a reasonably decent map. Uh, I was plotting the sonar and infrared sensors together onto the same uh, same map and one issue I found with this is that the sonar free space readings were overwriting obstacles detected by the uh, infrared sensors for example. So I wanted to, uh, to try a different approach which I'll talk about in a second but this one worked pretty well um, with the map completed, I was then able to threshold the map just to show uh, the free space which is coming up. The next approach was to plot two occupancy grid maps, one for the sonar data and one for the infrared data and then to combine them into one map um, afterwards. So that's what you're seeing on the screen, that's the sonar map and then I'll show the infrared map. and. I'm doing this to try and avoid uh, obstacles that have been detected being overwritten by subsequent uh, readings and to combine the two maps I'm looking at both of them and if an obstacle has been detected in, in a cell in one of the maps it takes the maximum value of the two maps and the opposite is true for free space. If, if one map detects free space then you look at the minimum of the two maps and this seemed to work quite well. Some of this discrepancy, I think, is from the infrared sensors being mounted lower than the sonar sensors on the robot. So I'm going to leave this map on the screen for a second because it shows one of the other issues I'm facing, and that is odometry errors creeping in. You can see in this the robot did two laps of the garden, and the odometry doesn't line up, and that's leading to inaccuracies in the map. So that's something I'm going to have to address in the future. So talking of odometry errors, this was a bit of a failed map. Uh, so data was collected in the same way, but I think there was some errors with the your readings from the MPU 6050, and this led to uh, to the map not being plotted correctly. It should this should have looked similar to the map that we've just seen. Uh, I think this was due to not leaving enough time for the your values to settle, 
after the MPU 6050 was initialized and you can see what a mess the map ends up from this poor odometry and you'll see the path shoot off to one side of the map here and clearly that's not right so um, yeah this shows how important accurate odometry is or some function to correct poor odometry uh, when building the map. So there we go, I've successfully produced an occupancy grid map, although it needs some improvement. There are still errors in there due to uh, dormitory errors, either from the encoders or from the MPU 6050. So I'm going to have to do a bit more work on that. And I also want to start working on using the video that's captured as the robot drives around. Um, there's various options. I, I mean, as the robot's driving and looking at the ground, that's giving useful information. Uh, the robot doesn't drive on the grass as well as on the sort of paved areas so I wanted to detect the grass areas as an obstacle and add that to the occupancy grid map. I also want the robot to be able to detect areas of soil which is obviously where the plants are going to be and that's going to be the areas of interest to the robot and then produce uh, a, a map alongside the occupancy grid map uh, that shows the location of those, uh, of those plant areas. Um, these may even become landmarks and start looking at some different types of map as well. So there we go, that's what I'm going to be working on. Um, so that's it for this video. Um, I, hope, I hope you enjoy it and find it useful. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.